really show the kids um, to the extent the kids show themselves because um, I basically did um, a series of workshops in the so-called reform institutes or detention centers in um, three different places, Hong Kong, Macau, Sabor, Japan. And what I did was, during the workshops, um, I gave the kids um, access to a bunch of um, video cameras, video cameras, audio recorders, for them to express themselves through these mediums. Um, and I gave them a bunch of exercises, like themes, um, to, as, as means basically to talk about um, their feelings and thoughts. Um, and through the exercises, they were able to um, talk about their dreams, their fantasies, um, write letters to themselves, to their future selves, talk about their families and most memorable memories. Um, and, and through those things, they were able to show um, a self which is usually ignored by or dismissed um, by mainstream media and by these legal institutions um, because they were labeled as bad kids um, in these societies. Now, um, for some of these societies which are extremely obsessed with what's good and what's bad, um, basically very moralizing environments, um, these kids have lost quite a bit of their dreams and also hopes for the future. And it is through this workshop process that I hope they could regain some of these um, sense of um, self-recognition and also a sense of self-confidence that they actually um, um, could value their own differences with other people and also be able to think of themselves as having meaningful lives, not just the life um, which are defined by the legal institutions. What would you say to them, yourself? Uh, what kind of letter would you write to yourself um, via video? Uh, if you're going to see this video in five years time. So it's kind of like a video to your future self. Um, and through that exercise, um, I was hoping that they could um, think of their lives as having a, uh, a continuity. Um, not just like you are being uh, segregated into this institution and that's the end of your life and you have to restart again as if you have forgotten everything behind. Um, for me, that kind of um, amnesia doesn't really make people, um, how should I put it, it doesn't really make people um, recognize and learn from your past experience. Um, what I what I value for my own self-growth, for example, is how I could make sense from my past experiences into something I can use to improve myself, to grow, to expand my vision for the future. So I was hoping that um, through building the continuity for the kids uh, with media, they were able to also think of themselves in a more longer term, um, like someone who actually has a past and also has a future and could come to terms with these things. Yeah, yeah that's a really good question. No, I haven't. Um, in my adolescence, um, I, um, in my childhood, I was very good in class, so I was labeled as a good kid for a very long part of my childhood. And during my adolescence, um, I was suddenly labeled a very bad kid because of my gender and sexuality. Um, so that kind of dramatic shift from a good kid to a bad kid um, has constructed me very deeply in the sense that I was forced to rethink um, some of the assumptions behind these constructions and behind these labels. Um, so this project was also a way for myself to um, rethink some of these values and what that means to be a good kid or a bad kid living in a society like that. Okay. Generally, um, could uh, improve. How do you think they may go about that?
I think, um, in my very, from my very limited experience um, dealing with some of these institutions in these very limited places, um, I think the youth reform system, basically the whole youth uh, um, legal system, um, legally reform system, um, have to rethink, they have to reconsider what it means to be education for youth. Um, and not just um, shutting them off from society or um, incarcerating them, isolating them in terms of even information flow, um, so that they are denied uh, access to this mainstream society and then the mainstream society also doesn't have to see them as if the society would become much safer or more civilized. I think we really have to rethink our priorities of how to actually help these kids to grow up in such a way that uh, they could be useful for society. Uh, and the society could also learn from their differences. Um, there's a lot to be learned um, about diversity um, in these Asian, East Asian societies. Um, and a lot of the problems that we're facing, so-called youth problems these days, may be coming from our inability, actually the, the adult's inability to cope with differences. Um, our children, our next generations, have been growing up really fast and they have a lot of access to a lot of different kinds of information. So they may be growing up apparently um, um, being much more diverse than we used to be in the old days. So I think we adults have to learn to look at some of these, to register, to face, to confront, and also to learn from these differences from the kids and not just to shut them off or erase them. I definitely think that they have learned a lot from the process uh, because it wasn't really a documentary by me. It was a drug collaborative process between me and also the workshop participants. So, so just from the um, exercises they, they, done, they, they have done themselves um, and the exercises that they, they um, gave to me, um, you can really see how they have grown even um, during those months of workshopping with me. So um, I, I, I have learned a lot from them and um, I have a feeling that they have also learned a lot from the process itself. Not necessarily from me or from the documentary, but more maybe from their own process of making the works, of, from their own process of having that freedom, however temporary it is, to tell these stories about themselves. And I always think that to be able to narrate your own stories to someone is already therapeutic and it's already a learning experience. Um, you can actually see in, in the work itself how every time they tell the same story, it's a little bit different. So just by that, through that process of their telling, uh, they, I think they're already learning. Thank you.